Por qué? Hey Rick. What are we doing, buddy? <laughs> Good morning. Oh, you're all wet. Yes, yes. It's true. We got snow last night, but the ground's still kind of warm enough where in spots it's not really sticking, but in other spots it is. We still have a lot of outside projects left to do on the farm this year, but we also have a lot of inside stuff we can do right now. So today, Dad brought the groundhog down here. He's getting this thing all cleaned up. We got to do some servicing on it. I think all the hydraulic hoses basically need to be replaced or a good chunk of them. Good chunk of them in the back for sure. And we got a fuel leak somewhere, maybe, oh. potentially. Oh. It's not leaking until we need it. Right. Oh, 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 it looks like Cooper's doing a little bit of hoaxing. Daniel's son. up on the list we need to make a phone oh i'm sorry i'm being rude this is my office welcome i spend usually about eight to ten hours a day sitting right there if you need to know where to find me this is usually where i'm at i need to tackle through some of those canceled checks for my farm tax stuff and my personal tax stuff so that way we can be figuring out some end of year stuff if i need to do any write-offs that way we can be planning ahead a little bit then it's not like the last day of the tax year and i'm like oh geez i need to write off 157 dollars worth of things because then it you're in a rush i don't like paying taxes so i try to write off as much as i possibly can to get my income to zero or actually to make it show a negative sometimes that happens but before we dive into that really fun stuff i need to make a phone call the Ben site fiasco situation. So we went through a general contractor who was an AGI dealer to do all the workings over there other than the dryer shack. The dryer shack was our own doings. Since the situation with the Benz is so severe, I've been just trying to get a hold of as high up people as possible within AGI just to kind of get a grasp on the situation and make them aware of what's going on and honestly to see if they can help us do anything about it. So I've been visiting, he is the guy right under the CEO. He came out to the farm to see everything on October 27th. He said he'd get back to me in a week. I sent him a text on November 7th saying I've not heard from him in 10 days and he did not reply to that. I tried calling him yesterday, which was the 14th of November. So I'm gonna try calling him again today. Your name and number, a short message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible, thank you. Oh, he just sent a text said, Sorry, I can't talk right now. Give me a call when you can. Kind of got tearing into this and we're realizing there's quite a few hoses that are looking maybe a little bit more wicked than I thought. Like Cooper said, we might as well change them all. Peace of mind. When you're out in the cemetery, you really don't want to be blowing an old hose. I'm sorry I'm keeping everyone so in the dark on things that are going on. We just, basically we have to be private about it until we have an official statement released on something then we'll go into the full detail of everything but i did just get done putting together some stuff for an engineer some documentation things that i had I got done visiting with another lawyer so i i think i'm pretty much officed out right now not gonna lie the sun is also gonna be going down here in about a couple hours i got a little bit of stuff i want to pick up outside before it gets dark i can work in here on this tax stuff when it's dark so we're gonna get up and stretch the legs for a little bit. You gotta do that every now and again. As much as I wanna just sit there and crank stuff out, we gotta move, it's good for us. The snow did melt just a little bit today. My whole driveway was covered earlier. You couldn't see any rock at all, so that's good. But it is kind of sleeting right now a little bit. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. Yeah, you can kinda look at the roof of my house, see it a little bit. My outdoor pile is very quickly shrinking. These two tires right here, and those two tires down there, I'm gonna bring these over to the new 40 by 80 building that we're renting because these are some decent tires. If we ever needed them in a pinch for a wagon or a neighbor or something, they're, they're still in good condition. I am not sure what I'm going to do with these yet. These are extra cups that were on the inside of our leg. I could put them in here, but the problem with putting them in there, they're kind of awkward and I'm afraid I'm gonna stack them nice and they're gonna fall over and then they're just gonna get plowed over for a long time inside of there. It would make like a decent shelf for something, but 
I don't know. I got to decide yet. Maybe there's not as many in there as I think. Whoa, that's a unique rock. Huh. <laughs> that's kind of cool. That's how they invented jelly-filled donuts. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Are we going to get this? I got you by the nose. I got you by the nose. Oh, I got you by the nose. Oh boy, it's starting to snow. I better get out the old skates and the hockey puck here pretty soon. Just take a minute to admire. Wow. Other than those tires that are holding that door shut, we're clean. Nothing out here anymore. A little more snow last night. Yeah, look how good it looks over there. Ooh. Ooh. Hopefully we'll be able to go play out in the snow a little bit later this afternoon before the sun goes down. I just got off the phone with Paul, our fertilizer representative, I guess you could say. He was helping me come up with some plans for the lime to address the pH in our soils this year, as well as calcium, and then a few other micronutrients that we wanna add into our mix. So I actually need to get, have a phone call with Jamie now because Jamie's behind the applying, the mixing of all the fertilizer and stuff. So we need to make sure those two are aligned. Dad also just called and he said that there is a grain buyer 100 miles away that is offering a 65 cent above the market price price for the second half of December this year. So he's been on the phone all morning with several different truckers. Presley has three of them and then Ronnie. So that way we can figure out what their availability is and how much we can sell and be able to get out for the end of the month. And we've also been trying to figure out what is a fair price to pay the truckers for that distance. I also have a couple documents from my lawyer that I need to review, revise, and then send back to him. Then we can review those as well. So I don't have Microsoft Word on this computer, downloading it as we speak. Oh, it feels so nice to just have like cookie cutter problems to fix this morning. I like, this is easy. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. I'm unable to answer the phone. Did I make you yawn? This vanilla folder has all the Bensite contract stuff we've been working with, the, basically all the terms and agreements of our deal with the general contractor for the Bensite stuff. So I've been spending a lot of time reviewing that. I did read through the proposal that my lawyer sent me on stuff. It's been about five hours making little revisions and corrections and adding things and I add certain questions on stuff. So I have that in that folder right there. I printed off the unrevised sheet that the lawyer gave me. That is right here. I'm gonna have dad review this. I like to do it like this because then it allows someone to start from a blank state of mind, not with already a preconceived idea that somebody else gave them. For example, if I say, hey, I think we should paint the car this color. And then everyone else in the group kind of has in the back of their head, oh yeah, Cole likes the orange. Ooh, yeah, we should paint it orange. Where we may get a more creative color or maybe a more fitting color if we do from everybody's original genuine ideas that aren't influenced by anyone else. So when it comes to this, I put my ideas of what I thought would be revisions on things in the full collective log I had in my head, where if dad looks at that, he may think, oh yeah, this looks good. He may overlook something. So if he just starts from a blank sheet, then he may include something that I forgot. And then once he gets done with his, then we'll compare it to mine. We'll bring all the ideas together. We'll come up with the final revision. I also just got done working on our new proposed grave digging rates for 2022. It's been probably a good four years since we've had a price increase. It's not something that we want to do, but we just have to be fair to ourselves because fuel's doubled since the last time we did a price increase. Parts have gone up significantly, labor's more expensive, just everything in general around our grave digging business has gotten significantly more expensive. So at the end of the day, it's a business, so we need to be charging to where we are making money in order for it to be worthwhile on us doing it. And it is a bit of a specialty service, but 
we're not out to gouge. We still want to be there to help support the community through it because somebody has to do it. But at the same time, we just have to be fair to ourselves. So I've been comparing the high, high priced grave digging services around here, which I believe are $1,800 on a Saturday and $1,200 for a regular weekday service. So I think we're going to be positioning ourselves at $1,000 on a weekday, $1,250 on a Sunday, and then $1,500 on a holiday. We do have a really good friend named Marty who owns a really busy funeral home. They do over 500 funerals a year. And super genuine man. It's not a money game with him. It's a you know relationship thing. So I ran these numbers by him to see what he had to say about them, and he said it looks great, and he thinks that they're very fair. And then if a grave is oversized, we'll add an extra $250 to those, depending on what day the funeral falls on. And then for cremations, Monday through Saturday, we're gonna be charging $600. Sundays are $750, and holidays are $900. And if we have to dig a hole bigger than 18 inches in diameter, it's gonna be an extra $125 on top of that, because those holes take a long time to dig. Look at all our dear friends hiding down there. <laughs> there they go, prancing away. They'll be back. Oh, there's more over there. <laughs> Good day today. Beautiful day. It's like 26 degrees out, 4 15 in the afternoon. I just stepped out of my house for the first time. We've got about an hour and a half of daylight left. I got all the scrap, junk, whatever you want to call it, off the ground there. That is now cleaned. I do need to sort through those two buckets, but. I'm gonna be a little lazy right now and not do it while we have sunlight outside. I got this area over here all cleaned up, like right there. That used to just be all tall weeds. Look at that, nothing there anymore. I have one final spot that needs to be picked up. I got that little pile right there. Then I got this old gas pump. I think this thing's worth some money. I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with it. Dad said he used to fill that with gasoline when he was little, he got the whole thing per week to drive around with. That's what grandpa gave him. So I'd kind of like to keep that. We just need to find a good home for it. Cause right here, just building a mountain of weeds around it, not the best home. And then this fan, this used to be on the 50,000 bushel van that used to sit right here. This was new in 2013. Those are worth kind of a pretty penny too. We're not gonna use it most likely unless that bend back there needs a fan replacement, which I believe that's the same fan. But I should probably get that inside somewhere. Those seats belong to Scott and Denny now. They just need to come pick them up. And yeah, so I'm gonna try to get this area picked up here while we got a little sunlight. It's a game of consistency. Just tackle the little spots a little bit every day and you'll eventually get it done. I suppose if I'm feeling a little froggy, I could bring the bush hog over to the 40 by 80 building right up there. That's got hydraulic hoses on it that don't need to be sitting out in the sun. This is our tree puller. Same thing, doesn't need to be sitting out in the sun. I could, eh, I should probably pull that inside. That's got dirt in there that's frozen. I need to bring this back to Ron's place. These little, we'll just call them little knives. A bunch of them on the grave digging machine here. This is for when the ground is frozen. We hope we don't have to use it. But if the ground's real frozen, a cemetery, this is the machine we take out to eat through the frozen ground. And like I said, this could set 10 years straight, never be used. I would not care. But we got a bunch of these little knives that eat up the dirt to bust through the frozen ground. Most of them are getting pretty wore out. So I'm gonna start taking all these little bolts out, pulling these out. We'll put some new ones in. If I remember right, there's 360 of them. Ugh. Clean, clean, clean. We just got that left. And I also found this tractor weight. I think this is like a hundred pound wheel weight. I'm gonna keep that. Tell you why, that sun goes down quick. And this truck's been sitting outside all day and it's not plugged in. So hopefully. The go plugs kick in for a second. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Wire cutters, oh wire cutters. Those ones are too small. I need big ones, big wire cutters. 
Mm, you might work. That fan used to be hooked up to that electrical thing, which now look at it's kind of falling over a little bit. Oh wow, that's a quite the support we got going on there. We need to get that taken care of. I don't even know if that's gonna be there. Probably can just rip it out since we don't have bends over here anymore. But anyhow, there is a wire running right underground right here. You can see it snake up through here. That's preventing me from pulling it out. So I got all those ones unhooked, but there is this one ground wire right here that I cannot get the screw. It's down there at the bottom. It's one of those tiny little guys and it keeps stripping off on me. So I'm just gonna cut it. Twist it? Twist it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Alright. Alright. There we go. Okay. Good. Yeah. You can pull it. Is there any more you need to pull? Mm -hmm. I pull more. You're good. You're good. Now, why are you not beeping when you're actually low? You make no sense. Water gay. Good. We got fuel. A couple months ago, over at Kristen Rusty's, I cleared off this old hog feeding pad. So there's nice concrete under this, so I guess. I need to do a better job of controlling these weeds next year. But we put all the good scrap metal and kind of the good objects that we wanted to keep around the farm over here. That way they'd be off soil, and just sitting on some nice concrete here. So we just got some big I-beams and stuff, and steel fence posts, and just a few good pieces of scrap metal that can sit outside. But if you ever need them, or something like if I want to build a bridge, you know, I can do it. So, gonna be a perfect spot right here, at least for now. It's on concrete, we can get to it anytime, right on the edge. I do need to get those weeds cleaned up though, they don't look very good. We'll put that motor inside of this building. Right now, it's sitting outside on the other end with a whole bunch of other stuff I gotta put in here. We gotta do a little cleaning in here first before we can put that other stuff. I don't even know if we can see it. I think it's full of hay right now. Yep, it's full of hay. I had to wait for daylight for this. Clean, 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 clean. That is also clean. Nothing out there, because it's clean. This is also clean. See that? No, you don't, because it's clean. Just need to knock those weeds down, but we're clean. Now we're over at the bin site, which is extremely clean. The big pickup outside is done. Now it's on to cleaning up the inside of the building.